India's DRDO is upgrading its smart anti-airfield weapon, SAW, by adding satellite navigation-based mid-course guidance correction, enabling real-time trajectory adjustments for higher accuracy and flexibility. Initially developed as an inertial navigation system and GPS or GLONASS guided glide bomb, with a range of 100 to 110 kilometers, the SAW is already deployed on Jaguar Darren 3, Su-30 MKI, and Haltagis aircraft. The enhancement will allow strikes against mobile, hardened, and time-sensitive targets, even in GPS-denied environments, using indigenous NAVIC navigation. The upgrade also supports network-centric warfare, with in-flight target updates via secure data links. Developmental trials are reportedly in progress, with user trials expected next year, marking a major step in India's push for self-reliant, precision strike capabilities. The Indian Army has reportedly placed a follow-on order for 50 light strike vehicles or LSVs, from Pune base force motors to boost the mobility of its special forces. This comes after the Army's earlier procurement of over 2,900 such vehicles, including a major July 2025 contract for 2,978 Gurkha-based LSVs. Developed indigenously, these 4x4 platforms are designed for rapid deployment, operating in temperatures from 50 degrees Celsius to minus 30 degrees Celsius, and equipped with differential locks, run-flat tires, and weapon mounts for rockets, machine guns, and ATGMs. Their lightweight build allows airlifting and airdropping by heavy-lift helicopters. The LSVs underwent over two years of extreme condition trials, proving their reliability and aligning with India's Atmanurbar Bharat defense manufacturing goals. In May 2025, during Operation Sindor, Pakistan reportedly deployed 300 to 400 drones including Turkish Sungar models, to probe India's air defense. India's systems intercepted over 50 swarm drones, showcasing their strength, but also revealing the need for more advanced mobile defenses. In response, the Ministry of Defense issued a request for information for 48 air defense fire control radar, drone detector systems, to be mounted on 4x4 high-mobility vehicles. Designed with over 70% indigenous content, these platforms will integrate 3D search radar, tracking radar, electro-optical sensors, and laser range finders. They will link with India's air defense network, enabling rapid deployment and precision targeting against drones, aircraft, and helicopters, enhancing protection for both static positions and mobile forces. The Indian Army, planning to retire its T-72 main battle tanks after 2030, is considering converting older units into unmanned MBTs for high-risk missions. Inducted in the late 1970s and produced domestically since 1984, the 2,400-strong T-72 fleet has served in conflicts like Cargill, but now faces obsolescence amid rising threats from drones and top-attack munitions, as seen in the Russia-Ukraine war. While newer variants are being upgraded with advanced fire control, armor, and engines, the unmanned conversion aims to preserve combat capability without risking crews. The Defense Research and Development Organization and private firms may lead integration efforts, complementing the delayed future ready combat vehicle program. Cost concerns remain, but the move could sustain armored strength along sensitive borders. India is designing the Project 18-class destroyers, envisioned as its most advanced and heavily armed warships. These next-generation vessels will be the first Indian destroyers with sea-based ballistic missile defense capability, using DRDO's Phase II BMD interceptors to protect carrier groups, bases, and coastal zones from long-range threats. Displacing over 10,000 tons, they will surpass current Visakhapatnam-class ships in size, enabling larger VLS arrays advanced radars, and integrated electric propulsion. 
They will also deploy Project Kush's 250km range M2 SAMs and hypersonic missiles from Project Vishnu, designed for rapid, long range strikes. By integrating these capabilities, the Indian Navy aims to counter emerging multi domain maritime threats while strengthening its strategic deterrence and second layer defense posture in the Indo Pacific. In July 2025, ARD Director A. Raju stated that India's future mounted gun system may be based on the advanced light towed gun system, a lighter 155mm, 52 caliber derivative of the ATAGS. Developed with Bharat Forge and Tata Advanced Systems, the 15 ton advanced light towed gun system offers faster setup, all electric drives, and compatibility with ATAGS ammunition enabling rapid deployment in high-altitude and jungle terrains. The Indian Army's current ATAGS-based MGS prototype weighs 45 tons, limiting mobility. An advanced light-towed gun system-based mounted gun system, projected at 25 to 26 tons, could be airlifted by C-130J or C-17 aircraft, aligning with global trends in mobile artillery like France's Caesar system. Mounted on a high-mobility 6x6 or 8x8 platform, it would enable rapid shoot and scoot operations under the Army's Field Artillery Rationalization Plan. Rolls Royce has outlined plans to expand its defense and aerospace engagement in India following the implementation of the India UK Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement. The company is exploring opportunities to establish a maintenance, repair, and overhaul or MRO facility for the AE-2100 engines used by the Indian Air Force, while also aiming to scale assembly and testing for the multi-role transport aircraft program. Positioned as a strategic partner, India is central to the firm's co-development and capability-building goals. Rolls-Royce intends to double sourcing from India within five years, expand its local supply chain for complex aero engine parts, and strengthen collaborations with domestic partners such as HAL, Tata, Godridge & Boyce, Bharat Forge & Force Motors. The Indian Air Force is being urged to prioritize indigenous stealth unmanned combat aerial vehicles like the futuristic unmanned fighter aircraft, FUFA, and Guttuck, over expensive foreign fifth-generation jets such as the F-35 or Su-57. This shift aligns with Atmanurbar Bharat goals and addresses risks from contested airspace, as seen during Operation Sindor in May 2025 when Pakistan deployed hundreds of drones and PL-15 missiles. FUFA, optimized for air-to-air -air combat, and Guttuck, focused on air-to-ground strikes, will use indigenous engines and AI-driven autonomy to reduce costs and avoid dependence on foreign suppliers. Building on DRDO's SWIFT testbed and AMCA program, FUFA prototypes are targeted for 2026 with induction by 2032. Lessons from the Archer NG UAV acquisition, already integrating Astra MK-1A missiles, are expected to aid scaling UCAV operations to over 100 units by 2035, enhancing India's self-reliant, next-generation air combat capability. India's defense R&D sector is developing a lighter, air-launched subsonic cruise missile as a variant of its indigenous technology cruise missile program. Designed without solid fuel boosters, it will be powered entirely by a 4.5 kN small turbofan engine developed by DRDO's GTRE, enabling a range of around 600 km. The missile's shorter length side-mounted air intakes and improved aerodynamics make it compatible with fighters like the Su-30 MKI. Mirage 2000, and future Tejas variants. Several airframes have already been built and are undergoing ground tests, including engine and avionics integration. If testing stays on schedule, dummy carriage trials on Su-30 MKIs will start next year, followed by powered flight trials. Once operational, the missile will complement the heavier BrahMos A, offering greater platform flexibility and enhanced standoff strike capability deep into enemy territory without entering hostile airspace. <laughs> In 
India is advancing a joint warfare concept where Indian Air Force fighters like the Su-30 MKI, Rafale, upcoming LCA MK2, and the Navy's future twin-engine deck-based fighter, Ted BF, will operate as targeting extensions for frontline warships such as INS Visakhapatnam, next-generation destroyers and frigates. In this envisioned setup, aircraft equipped with advanced radars and sensors could detect threats hundreds of kilometers away, relaying data for long-range missile strikes by ships, while warships' powerful radars could extend fighters' situational awareness. This integration is aimed at countering high-threat scenarios in the Indian Ocean region, including adversary carrier groups and submarines. Success would hinge on secure, high-bandwidth, anti-jamming data links and AI-enabled battle management systems. With growing indigenous capabilities, India is preparing for a future where air and naval assets operate in a seamless, network-centric grid for rapid, precision strikes. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.